Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Chris, this is my shop partner Roots, and in this video I'm going to show you how to build a couple different sets of cornhole boards. One's going to be a really easy project with some simple tools, but then we're going to step it up a notch and make one that has LEDs in the top so that we can play at night. Now Oots here, he's been talking a lot of smack lately saying that he's the best at cornhole, so him and I are going to have an epic cornhole battle at the end, so make sure you stick around and watch that and see the LEDs in action at night. So, let's get started. First I head over to Lowe's who I want to thank for sponsoring this week's video and after shopping around the plywood section I found some boards that were already cut to 2 foot by 4 foot sections which is the exact size for a cornhole board. I hate breaking down larger sections of plywood so I was super happy to just use these. I grabbed two 12 foot lengths of both 1x4s and 2x4s because in one set I'm going to use 1x4s and the other I'll use 2x4s. You'll see why later on. I also grabbed my LED strips, some screws and then I head back home. I mark out the length of the first 1x4 and cut it using a jigsaw. If you have a miter saw, circular saw, or even some hand saws, you can accomplish the same cut. I choose to use a jigsaw because I'll use the jigsaw later on for cutting the holes out. I thought it'd be nice to just use one saw for this project. Then I measure my shorter pieces to span between the longer pieces and I cut those to length. Next, I'll mark out the screw holes every six inches before pre-drilling and countersinking those holes. I'll lay my top onto the side pieces, make sure everything is nice and flush, and drill the top to the sides. I also add a couple screws to the side pieces at the corners to give it extra support, and then I'll fill all those holes with wood filler and sand those flush later on. Now I'll lay out the hole in the center, which is a 6 inch diameter hole. It's 12 inches from each side to the center and 9 inches from the top. So I'll find the center point and then use a compass and set its distance at 3 inches, which will give me my 6 inch hole. Then I'll use my jigsaw with a narrow blade that can handle a tight curve and very carefully follow my circle. If you take your time, it's easy to get a really accurate cut here. The other alternative is buying a 6 inch hole saw, but those are kind of expensive and you'll probably only use it a couple times. They also require a pretty strong drill to run them. And then just a little bit of sanding to smooth out the edges. I'll lay out and make the legs now, but I'm not going to install them permanently until after paint. I want the legs to angle backwards slightly, so I'll make a mark that's 2 and 3 quarter inches back from the inside edge then down an inch and three quarters, and I'll drill a hole there. Then I'll center my leg on that hole, use a drill bit to make a mark on the leg so that I can use my compass again to mark out the curve. Then I'll cut the curve out and drill the hole the rest of the way, and I'll be able to install those legs later on. I found this scrap circle that I cut out previously and temporarily reattach it so that I can use this little compass that I had laying around that has a cutting wheel on it. I'll lay some blue masking tape down so that I can use that cutting wheel compass to make a perfect circle in the tape and I'll use that to paint a really nice accent circle around the hole. You can also use a regular compass and mark out your circle with a pencil and then use a really thin strip of masking tape to follow that line. I actually did that method on the other set of cornholes that I make later on. Then I'll lay out some more tape so that I can make a nice accent border around the perimeter. I filled all the screw holes with wood filler and sanded them flush and once I paint over those it'll look nice and clean. I originally had planned on painting the entire boards but I was shocked at how nice the grain was on these pieces of plywood so I decided to leave most of the wood showing and rubbed in some wipe on poly to give them some durability and really make the grain pop. A buddy of mine asked me to build him a set of cornhole boards and that's how this project even came to be. He's a huge Michigan State fan so I decided to make him a couple MSU themed boards. Football and tailgate season is fast approaching, so I'm sure these are going to get a lot of use. I easily found the large decals and different bags online, so if you want to make a set with your favorite team, it's really easy to find those online. Now I install the legs and cut them to the right height of 12 inches. The easiest way to do this was to flip the board over, make a small mark at 12 inches up from whatever surface you flipped it over on, then take a long scrap piece and rest it on the other end of the board, line it up with your 12 inch mark, strike a line and cut it at that length. Now the feet will have the proper angle and they'll sit at the proper 12 inches off the ground. 
I coat the front and back with three coats of spar urethane to give these boards a really durable weather resistant finish and they're all done. This was a really easy project that turned out great and pretty much anybody out there can do this. But now we're going to take it up a notch and make a set that has LEDs in the top. For this set I'm using 2x4s because I need the extra width of a 2x4 for its larger glue surface. I use screws and clamps to hold the top in place while the glue dries, but then I need to remove the screws because that's where I'll route out the channel for my LED strip. Now this part gets a little bit confusing, but for this set I'm going to cut out a hole in the top that has a radius that is 3 quarter inch wider than a normal set. Then I'll take some scrap wood and make that normal 6 inch hole and then I'll drop that underneath and glue it in place. Now on that scrap piece I had to route away some extra material so that the LED strip has clearance when it's turned on its side. You'll see what I mean later. So now I'm going to route out a 3 quarter inch channel around this board so that I can install this really cool multi-color LED strip. Then I'm going to fill that channel with epoxy and when I turn the LEDs on it should give a really, really cool glow. So let's get started with that. I set a couple guides at a distance that will give me a 3 quarter inch wide channel and then I route out the waste in a couple passes. I want to take a second and thank Lowe's for sponsoring this video. I got all the tools and materials for this project except for the decals, bags, and epoxy from Lowe's, and so I'll list all those items down in the description. I've been going to Lowe's for years and basically remodeled my entire house through them, and so I'm super excited to now be partnering with them and making cool content like this. One of my favorite things about Lowe's is the 10% discount they give to veterans. That adds up really quick and it's something that I personally really appreciate. And if you like this video and you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel and if you hit the little bell icon, that'll give you notifications anytime I put out a new video. I really appreciate that and love reading any comments or suggestions you have, so thank you so much for that. Here you can see why I needed to route out that center scrap piece a little bit deeper so that when the LED strips are on their side, there's still enough room. I glue down the LED strips using some CA glue and then I take some scrap wood that I put sheathing tape on one face and run a bead of silicone along the sides to make a watertight form all the way around the board so the epoxy doesn't run all over the place. I then mix up some casting resin and add some white pearlescence to it. Then I turn on the LEDs and start pouring the epoxy in. So as you can see, the coffee can was not a good idea. I started to get a little bit worried, but I did eventually get it out. On the other board, I used a plastic gallon jug of white vinegar that also had a six inch diameter and that popped out no problem. Now I take the forms off and begin smoothing out the epoxy. I used a large chisel and an old hand plane for some of it because I just couldn't help myself. I really love hand tools, but you can also use a sander for the whole thing. Just be careful not to sand through the thin piece of veneer that's on top of the plywood. For this set, I decided to paint them half blue and leave the other half natural wood. Once the paint dries, I'll again add a few protective coats of spar urethane, attach the legs, and now it's time to go kick Oots' butt in a game of cornhole and settle this once and for all.
Well, everybody, there you go. It's pretty obvious. Oots kicked my butt at cornhole. <laughs> and now it's starting to get dark, but the cool thing about these boards is that turn the LEDs on, and we're going to keep playing. I'm going to see if I can get some uh, retribution here. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, please think about hitting that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you get notified for any other videos. And we'll see you next time. Let's go. Let's go.